Hi y'all, welcome back to Homestead to Health. My name is Caitlin and today we're going to be looking around to see what is going on in the gardens, what's growing, and just do a weekly update on where everything's at. Not seen on that really long video, this is some random squash that I planted over here. Uh, they seem to be doing pretty well, this one more so than the other. So the buckwheat has been doing really, really well. As you can see here, it's over a foot tall, I would say. But last week, whenever I did the garden tour, all of my buckwheat was like this kind over here, just a couple of inches tall. So this is really starting to shoot up and it's starting to set like the flower bunches at the top. So this is doing really, really well, especially for being in a raised bed that doesn't really hold like a lot of moisture. Uh, well, it doesn't hold it as tightly as like the ground does. So this is doing really well. I'm really surprised about how little my cucumbers are doing right now. This one seems to be doing pretty well. It's starting to set flowers and it's starting to climb through the back where my radishes are doing pretty well. These are daikon radishes if you remember. So I've already thinned these daikon radishes quite a good bit but they probably could stand to be thinned out a little bit more. My beans are doing phenomenal. I've already harvested a whole bunch of beans. If you're not following me on Instagram, shameless plug, you should totally follow me on Instagram. I posted a recipe with a fresh green bean salad the other day. So really excited about these. Okay. My sunflowers are about toddler high right now. I forgot to mention in my garden tour itself that this is my shade box behind me. While I did plant things for the springtime in my shade box, I did not have anything for the summertime planted in my shade box. I just, I didn't get around to it and I couldn't find anything really to plant that I wanted to plant that would grow well in the shade. So this is being a little neglected this time, but I am already making plans for my fall garden, which include the shade box. My squash bed is looking extra lush right now. Um, there has been some squash bug damage. This um, particular plant here has had a little bit of wilting to it, like this one. Once they kind of start looking like that melted clock painting, you could probably guess that they've had some damage. I'm going to let it go though because nature will surprise you. So there's actually been new growth on this plant since I've seen the squash bugs get to it. Um, this is a a candy roaster squash and this it's just not standing up to the pest. I've done the sprays, I've stuck needles through the spine of it to try to kill the pet the, the vine borers and nothing is really helping it. But I'm gonna let it go because every time it grows a little bit it sets down new roots where it can. And like I said there's been new growth since so I'm gonna just see what happens. I'm gonna allow nature to surprise me on this but everything else is looking pretty good. In fact do you see what I see? That would be my very first yellow squash of the summer. So my squash bed behind me is extremely full. If it's not full of squash, it's full of melons and uh, all kinds of melon plants. Now that might look absolutely obscene. You might think like, why would you pack them in that tight? These things are supposed to be planted three feet apart, blah, blah, blah. Um, honestly, it's because I know that some of these varieties of squash, the bugs are gonna get to them probably way before I do. And I'm kind of weeding through these things. Um, I've mentioned before that I'm trying to find varieties that are very bug resistant for in the future. Um, and this is kind of just thinning out the weak, so to speak. And so what squash doesn't do well here, I'm not gonna be too beaten up about it. As long as I get something out of this garden, I'm super happy because in my head, even if all of the squash gets wiped out, that'd be extremely unfortunate, but I would have a really awesome uh, melon cantaloupe kind of patch here and I'm still okay with that. I mentioned a second ago though that I'm already planning my fall garden. I'm planning what's going to be planted in the fall in the big garden. I'm, I'm planning what's going to be coming behind me and then in the shade box. I'm giving these things due thought already because I feel like even though I was really prepared and I had a lot of plants and um, transplants planted out for this year, I still feel as if I could have put more down, as if I could have done more. So I'm definitely putting a lot of thought into um, the years to come and finding out what squash work and which ones don't. But I'm also paying a lot of attention now to see maybe where I should plant some other things in the fall that I missed out on in the spring. And the reason I mention that is because 
If you're having problems with squash bugs now in the spring and early summer like we are today, um, try again. Try again in the fall because some people who don't have luck in the early part of the season, they, they say that they go on to have practically no bugs at all later in the fall. So if I don't have a good squash harvest now, I'm going to have one in the fall. So you might have missed it, but these are actually some uh, just pretties that I planted. I don't know the names of them, but that I planted for my husband's birthday. And uh, fortunately, we just so happen to have a matching pot where my strawberries are planted. And now that they're out of the sunshine and they're up near the house, they are doing a lot better. Strawberries actually do not like a lot of really harsh sunlight. They do better um, kind of like tucked away in the shadow of things. At least the alpine strawberries that I have, that's what they prefer. So this is my kid's garden, the front garden, if you missed it. Uh, what's special about this front garden is that it was completely depleted of nutrients. Uh, my soil tests all came back bare. This was really, really missing most of anything that it takes to really grow a plant. The weeds didn't even want to grow. So I came through with 10 gallons of rabbit poop and all of this lushness, be it weeds or flowers or in this case beans too, um, I'm really happy to see all of this coming. And the only real progression in this garden bed is that the beans have started to set flower. We are headed to the uh, the big plot garden right now, which is probably why your ride's a little wobbly. But so much has happened this past week and I cannot wait to show you. Look at that morning glory starting to climb. New to the garden this week is some lavender that I planted where I had a bare spot. Look at all of these herbs. Now, I know you probably can't see this dill until I put something behind it but look how tall this dill has gotten. This actually grew, I mean, at least four inches since last week. It has been loving it. In fact, though, uh, probably now is a good time to point out that it is already hot enough for my basil that most of my basil has started to bolt and, go, and try to grow these little seeded heads. Um, every time I'm in the garden, I have to come through and just kind of pick the heads, and that encourages them to bush out instead of trying to go to seed. Um, but this is my lime basil and I've had to do that to it several times. Now, I don't think, here's some more of that basil. I don't think that we've been properly introduced. So this is Humphrey. Humphrey is my garden turtle. And last year he was underneath my cucumber trellises by my raised beds. And I used to sit on his back, which you can probably tell because he has a worn down back. I used to sit on his back and pick cucumbers. So I moved him here to be my companion for this large garden and I think he looks happy. Doesn't he look happy? My borage is looking lovely. I had several bees on it this morning that I was really happy to see. The lemon cukes are starting to go. My bushes are starting to get very bushy. These are huckleberries and uh, pineapple tomatillos. I think I've got a couple of husk. Let's see. Oh, yep. That's a husky boy. There's a, oh, don't pick it. There's a husk there, there, and I can see several others in there. Some more over here. I've got plenty of husk coming out. And that's the way that pineapple tomatillos and Aunt Molly's ground cherries, that's how they grow, is they have these little Chinese lantern kind of looking husk, and once they're ready, they'll open up, some of them will drop, and that's how you collect them. So I'm really excited to see all those husks already there. Um, along with the husk on the pineapple tomatillos, all of my tomato plants, well, tomato varieties, all of my tomato varieties have some fruit setting on them. And I'm kind of being a stalker. So these are my Tommy Toe tomatoes that I love so much. And I am full swing obsessed and stalking them, ready to eat their bounty. There's a hidden guy right there. You see him? Right next door to the Tommy Toes, here's one of my indigo apples, and you can see that it's already starting to have that bluish hue to it. 
Um, that's because of their exposure to the sun, and that's the character trait that makes it, you know, the indigo apple. But now I'm starting to get sweetheart eyes for it. <laughs> I am so happy to announce that I'm getting my first buttercup squashes to come off. Got that one, another one over here, and hidden amongst itself is another one. So right next door to the buttercup squash, which I'm so excited is to finally starting to put off fruit, um, right next door I have my zinnias. I am so in love with my zinnias, it's unreal. But just a little pro tip, which I'm not a pro, but pro tip, if you deadhead them, which means to take their deadheads and toss them, that'll continue to allow them to get bushy and they'll keep growing out. Um, a lot like green beans, um, flowers for the most part, like mums and zinnias and stuff, they do this thing where they bolt, which means they set off flowers or they set off their seed pods and if those seed pods or those flowers are allowed to age and uh, go to seed, that plant says, my life cycle is complete, my job is done. And so whenever they grow their first flowers and you keep plucking off their flowers, it'll continue to grow bushier and bigger and bigger and set off more and more flowers because to the plant, its life cycle is not done and so it's gonna continue to produce. So whenever it comes to beans, I will go through and the first set of beans that it puts off, I'll, you know, I'll snap them off and I'll eat them fresh. But then after a certain point, I will let the beans stay on the vine and, or stay on the bush and they will stop producing as many and then they will dry up and then that life cycle of that plant is done. Speaking of beans, look how beautiful those striped beans are. Now those are Borloto, I think, from Baker Creek. I also have some dragon tongues somewhere in the mix. Who knows what this is called? Is this a snapdragon? This thing is precious, but it's getting it's getting blocked out by. Oh, it's been strangled. Oh no. My squash is taking it down. It's gorgeous though. I have a couple of flowers coming up. This I believe is an aster and it is so beautiful. It's actually my aunt's birth flower. Isn't that amazing? Right next to it, we have our first sugar rush peach pepper growing. That's amazing. We also have a few um, lilac bells that are coming. My peanuts are looking big and bushy. My potatoes are starting to really bush out and vine around and spread their wings and fly. And there goes that rampicante. I mean, just steadily going. Whoa, is that a squash I didn't know I had? Sure looks like one, huh? Wow. It might look pretty unassuming, but once you start getting into these beans, I mean, they are just, oops, everywhere. All through there. One's right here. Here's those deep purple dragon tongues I was talking about. Now, I'm pretty sure these are called Borloto, and these are from Baker Creek. And they've got these red, awesome stripes. They don't stay during the cooking process, but I like how big and flat these ones get. Um, whereas the dragon tongues seem to be a little on the wispier side. I have tried letting them go a little longer, but definitely the Borloto kind of outshine, at least in my opinion. Um, back here are my chrysanthemum melons, and I've been training them up this trellis, but I don't see any baby melons yet. Tisk tisk tisk, guys. That's okay, I can be patient as I picked my beans. I maybe should have picked beans after I was done vlogging because it's kind of hard to juggle, but I actually wanted to show you something that I thought was so funny. These beans on this uh, side fence, they have started reaching up and growing up that tree right there. I thought that was so neat. My uh, cherry red sunflowers, they're still not doing very well. As you can see, there's a huge gap, some of them like that one are just laying over and starting to die. That one's dying back. I don't know why my other sunflowers seem to be doing 
extremely well. I still don't have really much of an inclination on what I'm going to plant there uh, around this time to fill up those blank spaces. I thought about doing a squash because the squash will just bush up pretty quick and just run. Or maybe some more melons. Um, what do you think? I don't know. I think I have enough melon. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? Maybe I'm not thinking out of the box enough. Um, somebody did mention that I should plant more beans in my raised bed garden. I think that that's what I'm probably going to end up doing. Whew. This weekend I have my best friend visiting from out of town, my childhood best friend. And I'm going to be taking a little bit of footage. You know, as a mom, I'm never in the photos. Uh, and I don't really get to see myself kind of like doing daily things with people. Um, and experiencing life with others and so this weekend I'm going to be very diligent or try to be very diligent about catching a lot of uh, footage and of us just hanging out and being together because I know um, we've been friends since fourth grade and I think we have like a, a very small handful of photos and pictures together and those things to me now as I'm getting older and I'm getting a little bit more mushy and gushy I guess uh, those things are really important and bless me in a big way and so I'm going to be taking lots of video of us together and then putting out a home video for you guys and that I hope that that blesses you too. So thank you guys. Thank you for walking around my gardens with me and seeing what's new this week and uh, checking in to see what's going on, what's growing on around here. So if you haven't already, now's an awesome time to subscribe so that you don't miss out on my weekly updates moving forward. I would love for you to see what's going in my garden, what's growing on, what I do with the harvest that come out of here. Um, I know right now particularly I have plums on the menu coming up soon that I'm going to be sharing with y'all and just a couple of other projects that I know that you're not going to want to miss. So hang around, stick around, uh, see what I do with those. But thank you so much for hanging out with me today, guys. I'll see you later. Yeah. Whoa, yeah, a lightning bug. Good job, it's good on my pillow. You want a friend?